This is a new product instructional video for the upcoming separate sale centipede A units. These locomotives are available on Pennsylvania Five Stripe, Seaboard, and Nacional de Mexico. Out of the package you will receive the manual for loading the memory module, the manual for the locomotive itself, smoke fluid pipette, smoke fluid funnel, four replacement traction tires, and the engine memory module specific to the road name and road number of the locomotive. These separate sail centipedes feature directional lighting, front and rear electrocouplers, dual smoke units, rotating roof fans, die-cast shell, die-cast trucks, die-cast side frames, die-cast pilot. The engines also feature legacy rail sounds and Odyssey 2 speed control. Now on our Centipede A unit, each locomotive is equipped with a set of switches that can be accessed by removing the rear switch access panel. It is keyed, it will only go on one way, and it's held in by magnets. You want to make sure that you leave this hatch alone, as this hatch serves as part of the antenna system for the locomotive. Inside we have our three or four switches along with our volume pot. The first switch closest to the center of the locomotive is the program run switch. Place the switch in program to either assign the ID number if you're using command or legacy. If you're a conventional operator, the program position is where you is the E unit lockout that will keep the locomotive going one direction at all times. The run position is used for operating the locomotive and for conventional operators will allow you to attain all three directional states. The next switch is the Odyssey 2 speed control. In the ODY position, Odyssey 2 is enabled. In the no ODY, Odyssey 2 is disabled. The next switch we have is the front smoke unit on-off switch. In the SMK position, the smoke is on. In the no SMK position, smoke is off. The last switch we have is the rear smoke unit. In the SMK position, the rear smoke is on. In the no SMK position, the rear smoke is off. Finally, we have the manual volume potentiometer, or volume pot. This will allow you to control the overall sounds of the locomotive in a conventional environment. If you're using legacy or command, you can control the volume from the remote and leave the volume pot set at high. As you can see, the underside of our centipede is where the locomotive gets its name. There were a total of eight driven axles on each centipede A unit. Before we put this locomotive on the track, we want to make sure that we properly lubricate these trucks and collectors to prevent any unwanted squealing when the, or squeaking when the locomotive is being operated. To do this, we're going to use our oil bottle with our needle applicator. What we want to do is place a small drop of oil on the axles where they go through the bearings in the truck blocks. Just a small drop is all that's necessary on each axle where it goes through each bearing. Once you have the oil on the axle, we encourage you to work it in with your fingers. This will help lubricate those bearings in that axle and prevent any unwanted squealing. Next we want to do the same thing to each of the four axles on the power truck. Both sides, between the gear and the bearing, and the wheel on the bearing on each side. Repeat the steps for each axle on the rear truck as well as the front truck, the trailing truck, and the pilot truck. You also want to put a small drop of oil on the axle for the collector and work that in with your finger. This will prevent the collector from making any type of squealing sounds that you really don't want to hear when you're operating this type of locomotive. and repeat the process for the other two collectors on the opposite truck. Now before we get our separate sail centipede on the track, we want to make sure that we load the engine memory module so that we can tell our legacy remote everything about the engine that we're going to control. Using our numbering convention of the last two digits of the road number, 
the separate sale Pensy 5 stripe centipede is cab number 5821 so we're going to use engine 21 we'll take the engine memory module and insert it in the top of our cab with the silver circle L facing up we'll press the info key one time and the button under load this tells us it's a Pennsylvania 34676 centipede number 5821 load engine data we press yes engine data is loaded we remove the orange module and take just a few minutes and show you what this has done it's already assigned our name by pressing the scroll I scroll button we can see that the type is diesel scroll again has set our control to legacy mode and scroll one last time has set our sounds to legacy rail sounds to exit this menu we press the info key the cab number displays momentarily Pennsylvania Centipede scrolls across the top. What this has done for us down here is we press engine 21. We have the icon for startup sounds. The speed limit which will allow us to set the maximum speed of the locomotive. And the cab light icon which will turn the cab light on and off. By pressing aux 1 we have volume up, crew talk, manual RPMs up, volume down, the black circle is shut down. If I turn the red throttle and get the locomotive moving, that icon changes to a black triangle, which is emergency stop. If I turn it back down and stop it, the black circle again is shut down. I have RPMs down, tower calm, smoke off, smoke on, the R is engine reset, rule 17 lighting on, and rule 17 lighting off. By pressing the speed bar, I have my six preset railroad speeds, tower calm, smoke off, smoke on, a bar graph which directly represents the labor of the locomotive, the one inside a box which is roll speed, roll speed is the first speed step the locomotive will attain and hold, effects up, as I press effects up, on the top of the cab it says labor increase and the bar graph raises, as I press effects down, labor decrease appears and the bar graph drops. To exit this menu, press aux 1 and you're back to the engine operation screen. Now before we get our separate sale centipede up and running, we need to make sure that we tell it what ID number it's going to respond to. We've already told our legacy remote under engine 21 by loading the engine memory module into it that uh, it's a Pennsylvania centipede cab number 5821. Now we need to tell the locomotive that it should respond to engine 21 commands. So we'll remove our hatch over our switch cover, place the program run switch in the program position, apply power. Now you'll notice when we apply power that only the number boards illuminate. This is normal. We'll go ahead and assign the engine ID number as engine 21 and press the set button. The horn tells us that the locomotive has taken the command and we can place the program run switch back in the run position. We also want to make sure that the Odyssey switch is in the ODY position and that both smoke units are in the on position. Go ahead and turn off our track power, replace our switch cover, and before we actually start running the locomotive, we want to make sure that we add smoke fluid. So using the funnel that came with the locomotive, place that in the stack. Using our smoke fluid pipette and line out premium smoke fluid. We want to fill the pipette about three quarters of the way from the tip to the very first line. And insert that in our funnel. Couple puffs of air to make sure that we don't have a meniscus affecting the smoke operation. Place the funnel in the rear smoke unit. Repeat the process. About three quarters of the way from the tip to the first line on the pipette. Add our smoke fluid. Again, a couple puffs of air. And we can set all of this aside. Now we can go ahead and get our locomotive running. So once again, we'll apply track power. Once 
When pet track power is applied, only the number boards come on. I'm going to press engine 21 on my legacy remote and press and hold the startup or the power on icon in the lower left hand corner of the touchpad so you can hear the dialogue. Dispatcher here, do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start her up and stand by for track orders. Copy that, dispatcher. We'll get up and running. Out. modern legacy locomotives. This locomotive is equipped with two separate sound volumes. The first being the global sound volume, which we're going to adjust now so I don't have to compete with the locomotive. We access that by blowing the horn once, and then pressing the sound or the volume down icon on the touchpad. That bell sound tells us that we're controlling the global sound system. Now I'm going to blow the horn again so you can see how that has affected the horn volume. Not nearly blasting the speakers out of your computer. The other volume we have that we can control are the background sounds. This would be the prime mover, tower column, crew talk, squealing brake, coupler sounds, etc. We can control that volume separately by pressing the aux one or straight arrow key on the remote and then pressing the volume down icon on the touchpad. And if I hold it, you can hear that the volume of the background sounds has gone down completely, but I still have full, or I still have the volume that I set on the horn, as well as the bell. So, let's bring those background sounds back up, press aux one with a straight arrow key, and then the volume up icon on the touchpad. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and turn the smoke unit on. I'm going to turn the smoke unit to high. And it's normal for it to take a few minutes for the smoke to start appearing. Or in this instance, it fires right up. If it does take some time, it is normal. It's okay. The amount of smoke that you get out of the locomotive when it's at idle will be less than you get out of the locomotive when it's running. We're going to go ahead and turn the throttle and get the engine running. You'll notice that the cab light will turn off and the uh, front headlight, if rule 17 lighting is on, the front headlight will get brighter. As I run the locomotive, the smoke will increase. As my RPMs raise, my roof fans will start spinning faster in sync with those RPM sounds. Go ahead and play the uh, single note horn for you. The bell. Tower calm. Dispatcher here. All clear inbound. Over. Copy that. Out. Crew talk. Dispatcher. Now that track load. Are we clear? Over. Yes, you have a clear track. Over. Thank you, dispatcher. Green lights ahead. Out. I'm going to go ahead and slow the locomotive down with the brakes so you can hear the squealing brake sounds. Locomotive is now at idle. You'll notice that the volume of smoke will diminish and will drop down until there's virtually no smoke coming out of the locomotive. This is normal. I'm going to go ahead and open the front coil coupler using the F button on the legacy remote. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the R button to open the coil coupler on the rear of the unit. Direction will make my front headlight come off, turn off, and my marker lights turn on. Locomotive is now in reverse. Press direction again, marker lights go out, front headlight comes on. These separate sail centipedes are also equipped with what's known as sequence control. Sequence control is a series of dialogue that is based solely on throttle responses. So to enter sequence mode, you simply press and hold the AUX1 key for three seconds, and the locomotive will give you two bells and a short horn blast to tell you that it's entered sequence control. Go ahead and press AUX1 now. My 
two bells and horn, I'm now in sequence control. So now when I go to speed step one, the locomotive doesn't actually move. But I get some horn sounds. Get some tower calm. And now I'm going to go ahead and get the engine running by moving it to speed step two. From speed step two to speed step 23, the bell will stay on. Once I get over speed step 23, into speed step 24 and above, the bell will turn off automatically. Now you still have manual control of the horn, the bell, tower con, crew talk, etc. But the locomotive will also make all of those sounds on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and make a drastic change to the speed of the locomotive and you'll hear the dialogue we get out of that. And another drastic change down. I'm at slow speed. Out. And finally I'm going to go ahead and start slowing the engine down. Once I get below speed step 24, the bell will turn on automatically. And will stay on until I reach the number one speed step, at which point the bell will turn off. But the locomotive is still at speed step one. When I go to speed step zero, I'll get a dialogue. Now to exit sequence control, I simply press the AUX1 or straight arrow key and then the R icon on the touchpad. That horn tells me that we have now exited sequence control and we're back to manual control. I can load fuel in my locomotive by pressing and holding the R or the reset key on the touchpad and it sounds like this. Now as long as I hold that reset key down, the fuel will continue filling. When I let off the reset key, you'll hear this dialogue. Dispatcher, we've got a full tank. Over. Copy that. Out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and play the shutdown sequence, which is the AUX1, or straight arrow key, and the black circle in the center of the touchpad. To get the sounds to come back on, I simply readdress the locomotive on the cab, engine 21. And in the lower left hand corner is the on off switch. I simply hit that one time. My sounds will come back up and my engine's ready to operate. These separate sail centipedes are the only centipedes that have both a front and a rear operating coil coupler on just the A unit alone. The Vision Line AA Centipede set has only a coil coupler on the front of the A units. 